my name is Jade. I have been hearing a lot about the Ebola virus in the news lately, and like most kids, I was wondering what it all meant. I'm here with Dr. Tom Pruvlovich, who has been nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine, and who experienced firsthand a outbreak of the Ebola virus in Africa 20 years ago. Dr. Tom, can you tell us a little about yourself? Well, I'm a European doctor. Uh, my specialty is epidemiology, infectious tropical diseases. I got my Master of Public Health, uh, School of Public Health in Houston, Texas, and I attended a course for Doctor in Public Health. And uh, I was involved in uh, Ebola epidemics uh, by being employed by WHO World Health Organization as Interregional Medical Officer for Africa. And uh, my boss, legendary doctor Jonathan Mann, our professor, discovered Ebola virus uh, with Dr. Uh, Peter Piot from Belgium. And before leaving Africa, he asked me if I could take care about Ebola epidemics. I agreed, and we knew how to do it step by step to prevent the spread of Ebola in Africa. At that time, those were small epidemics, unlike this year in West Africa, and I was in all these countries 20 years ago, and I was working in about 50 uh, developing countries uh, from 1963 to 2000, uh, 50 countries, including Somalia. That's how I learned about Ebola in Africa being a doctor, missionary doctor with flying doctors of Africa, with World Health Organization and UNICEF. For us kids out there, can you explain what Ebola is and how do you catch it? Ebola is one of the deadliest viruses. It's a member of filovirus group and we call it hemorrhagic fevers, like Marburg hemorrhagic fever, and septum hemorrhagic fever and it's so dangerous that we still don't have neither treatment nor vaccine uh, against Ebola infection. You can get it just uh, when you get in touch with any body fluids like primarily blood and everything else and that's why in now steps how to prevent it is uh, to keep people away from touching uh, any body fluids, to touch any uh, dead victims, to do anything uh, around them. Otherwise, uh, it's enough even to have one drop of blood on your skin, and that's it. You can get it within three, officially three to twenty one days after getting infected. My experience in epidemics that I was in charge of was from up, even up to one month. So again, it is very important not to get in touch with anybody for this. Can you explain in your opinion what is being done incorrectly in containing this virus in Africa right now and, ha and what else can be done to help the victims? It's very difficult to criticize uh, people who are victims of this deadly disease. Uh, they were doing probably their best, but there are a few things that were not done right. First of all, when it started in Liberia, according to the Liberian president, she said that they were denying it. And countries around Liberia thought it's someone else's uh, headache. Only today, on August 9, Sierra Leone, an ex-country who is already affected by Ebola, decided to close the sealed frontiers with Liberia. It sh should have been done much earlier. Uh, so, but are we concerned? Are we supposed to be concerned? Yes, very much so. I'm having a problem that some of us who were involved directly in uh, preventing the spread of Ebola earlier, 
are also concerned very much. Why? Because even WHO, World Health Organization, my former employer, I'm not criticizing them, but they were delaying, they were slow in delaying their action, and only recently they allocated about $100 million to help those countries. Too late, in a way. Uh, also, uh, World Bank decided to give uh, much more money, again, too late. It should have been done much earlier. Uh, finally, CDC uh, had just about, Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, uh, had just about few uh, of their experts uh, handling Ebola epidemic in Liberia, and Liberian presidents said that they were stretched thin. So now they are sending another 50, they send already another 50, and altogether about 200 experts to organize response to the Ebola epidemic. Uh, it should have been done much earlier. And uh, it seems that even media, you mentioned at the beginning that you heard a lot, but lately there are some other uh, breaking news on TV. Even media are thinking that somebody, uh, some, somebody else's uh, headache and they are not concentrating so much. So I would like them to emphasize much, much more so that we don't have uh, emergency, global emergency, although WHO World Health Organization declared that uh, global emergency is already there and that uh, uh, CDC put the, uh, their people and itself on the highest alert. We should have done much more and we know how to do it, uh, but anyway, it's not too late. In your opinion, what should have been done in the beginning and what could be done now? By the affected countries. In addition to what I said about delayed and slow response of international community and all uh, who were supposed to be involved, affected countries made one initial wrong step. I already mentioned uh, denial, but also they didn't seal the frontiers. So we had it first in Liberia, then in uh, then uh, it spread to Sierra Leone, then to uh, Guinea, and from uh, Liberia we got it in Nigeria, which is the biggest African country, and that's worrying us very much, and now even Benin. But not only that, we have it in Saudi Arabia and we have it in Europe. So, sealing of the frontiers. Each country has to seal the frontiers and do other steps, of course. Next thing is to engage all health workers to uh, trace the contacts. Uh, I mean, contacts, when I say contacts, all family members of the uh, sick people have to be contacted and uh, all medical uh, needs to be done, like examining them, following them, to see whether they are infected also. Uh, those affected countries made another uh, crucial uh, wrong step. They are only now uh, engaging military, uh, only in Liberia though, to stop people coming from uh, all parts of the Liberia to the capital city. No, it should be uh, done uh, otherwise. Uh, Military persons should go and respectfully collect dead bodies because you must know then that in uh, African countries we know we people who are who were there, they are washing uh, uh, those who died and that is ideal uh, way to spread epidemic Ebola because uh, these dead people were uh, bleeding from everywhere and whoever is washing them is in touch with body fluids. Also lately we had the dead dumping dead bodies on the street. So military should go and collect dead bodies respectfully in the bags and not burying them uh, because we saw on TV that they put dead people in the very shallow graves and just cover them with a thin layer of dirt which is ideal for all stray dogs and animals around to, 
contribute to the spread of uh, deadly disease. Dead people should be cremated. That's another thing. And also, uh, we should stop international air traffic to uh, these countries, suspend actually, and keep it only to the emergencies. Finally, we should ask all foreigners, particularly diplomatic, uh, military people, business people, to send their family members back to USA and elsewhere, keep only essential there, essential people, so that no other countries could be involved. That's what I suggest and what we've been doing earlier with police and military, strictly controlling who is coming, who is going out. Actually, nobody is coming in the infected area, nobody is going out of the infected area. Uh, usually, that was a hospital and area around the hospital. What else can we do to help the victims of this terrible disease? We can do many things, but uh, one essential thing that we did uh, with my uh, boss, uh, late Dr. Jonathan Mann, uh, to stop spread of uh, HIV in Africa, is to prepare good information in advance for all these countries in their language, because what uh, I saw today on TV is the WHO uh, stated there were a lot of misinformation uh, about Ebola and that's why we have the spread. If there are misinformation, uh, WHO in the first place, I repeat, is uh, able and capable to prepare everything about every disease uh, in native languages so that people should know what is uh, what are the dangers and how to stop uh, many other people getting the disease and die. Are there any other dangerous viruses like Ebola? Yes, actually, uh, our military knows that there are about 17 uh, deadliest bioweapons. Number one bioweapon is smallpox. Ebola is number two. Plague is number three. I happen to be involved with all three top ones. In 1972, after 40 years that we didn't have uh, smallpox in Europe, all of a sudden, former Yugoslavia was hit by a terrible epidemic. I just came from India where I spent eight years and I was one of few doctors who knew how and what to do with uh, smallpox. We started vaccinating people, we started doing whatever we were supposed to do, whatever we learned in the books. But the problem was we couldn't vaccinate 20 million people uh, just over a short period of time. And I requested CDC for help. They sent me because I was in charge of that epidemic. I was criticizing the Yugoslavian government that they didn't take action earlier. And they sent me Dr. John Michael Lane, who was a young doctor of my age, a little bit younger, one month younger than me, and who was also in Africa and Asia, uh, shorter than me though. And uh, he came with a jet gun that military is using to vaccinate uh, military persons. We succeeded and we defeated uh, smallpox. Dr. Michael Lane is now chairman of WHO committee to follow uh, what's going on with smallpox. We keep smallpox virus in Atlanta and in Moscow, and he will be going to propose uh, that we destroy uh, in both places virus smallpox. Uh, people are asking me if we destroy it whether Ebola will be then number one bioweapon. We still don't know whether some other countries, rogue countries, are having maybe mm, smallpox virus, variola vera, as we call it. Uh, that's why uh, both Dr. Lane and me were nominated by Australian Organization for Expatriates and Minorities for the Nobel Prize in Medicine, although uh, 
we are both surprised because Nobel Prize in Medicine this year and every year is given to some breakthrough. But also, uh, the smallpox is the only disease ever to be eradicated. And uh, it's also some breakthrough, sort of. Uh, there are uh, other diseases I mentioned, plague, and WHO asked me while I was in India to prepare whatever we need to know about plague. I did it. So I was involved in all three. Ever since I came back from uh, Myanmar, my last country, I was from 2001, even before 9-11, till a couple of years ago, I was lecturing to young doctors all over the world uh, and forensic, forensic experts about uh, smallpox and Ebola. Not because I'm more clever than them, because young doctors are freshly graduated, they know everything about infection disease, but they wanted to know what is it like when you face uh, those dangers in real life, like uh, what is now going in uh, Africa. And I'm very sorry, and I want to use this opportunity, my dad, to say uh, how sorry I am that so many people are infected. 1,000 already died, uh, probably a couple of thousand infected. That's just official figure, uh, but count that there is much more of those who we don't know, who were never reported to the officials in these countries. And I'm also sorry about 60 uh, doctors and medical uh, helpers, uh, persons who died so far. That's why I'm also proposing something that we, uh, WHO, CDC, uh, and uh, ordinary people uh, help engage doctors from East Africa, Asia, who know very much and much better than anybody else about Ebola and other viral diseases uh, to help those affected countries and also uh, to help Doctors Without Borders uh, because I was very sorry to hear from Doctors Without Borders with whom I was collaborating that Ebola epidemic is out of control. If we do all this and also engage ordinary people to give some donations and uh, uh, help uh, organize assistance to this affected country, I think we will be able to defeat Ebola. I'm frankly impressed with your questions and I would be even more happy if everyone else, not only uh, young people of your age, but everyone else is continue to be interested in Ebola so that we can help uh, whatever we can do to better understand and to help those affected. Thank you so much. Thank you.